decades before Will Smith was issued with his neuralizer pen to wipe people's memories uh, of alien encounters in Men in Black, yeah. uh, Shadow were doing much the same thing, though um, arguably with a little bit less style and panache, perhaps? Yes, yeah, right, yeah. So you may recall that Shadow had an amnesia drug, which could be administered either by injection, as Dr. Mm-hmm. Fraser does in both uh, The Dialetech Affair and The Sound of Silence, or ingested in a tasteless form, as in non-tasting, I guess, rather than, oh, that's a bit tasteless. Uh, for instance, uh, <laughs> it was put in coffee in the square triangle. Now, mm-hmm. normally these would erase all memory of the last 12 hours or so, and then the recipient would be returned home never to have any contact with Shadow Shadow again, unless, oh, yeah. unless of course, uh, they were a pretty lady that oh, they'd got right. on well with before the drug was administered, <laughs> in which case That's... they could expect a follow-up visit from Paul wow. Foster. Not I mean, weird at it all. was the late 1960s, I know, I so, know. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. let's not go there. No. However, did you know that the original plan for Shadow's amnesia procedure involved a bit more corporation on the part of the person whose memory needed to be edited? Mm-hmm. Well... A document passed to the UFO production team in January 1969 outlined a piece of hardware that would ultimately never be used in the show, the Shadow Amnesia Watch. Oh, yes, I like the watch. sound of that. Yeah. So this document explained that anyone needing to be taken back to Shadow HQ for interrogation would be asked to put the watch on. Mm. Not made to, of course, just asked, very politely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is, it's a, a very British, you know. Shadow may be an international anti-alien organisation, but we're still British, and so we ask nicely. Uh, actually, to be fair, normally Shadow would just do whatever they wanted, so I'm surprised they asked. Yes, uh, now, yes, true. This watch uh, face had some flashing neon colours on it, while the back had a few small needles and suckers and things that would be connected Ooh. directly to the wearer's skin. Oh, crikey. It's right. a bit horrible, isn't it? Mm. Uh, by the time they arrived at the studio, the watch would have begun drip-feeding them a drug that would gradually induce drowsiness. Hmm. And by the time they were returned home, they would have forgotten all about their visit. Right. It's quite dark, isn't it? It is rather, yes. So, although the Shadow Amnesia watch has never appeared in the show... As with a lot of things in UFO, the plan was to make use of a prop that had previously been seen in Doppelganger. Aha! The wrist cardiac monitors worn by Eurosec personnel throughout the film. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Shadow would need some way to make members of the public forget their encounters with aliens, and the amnesia drugs seen in the show are so simple and efficient as a concept that it's hard to imagine anything else was ever even considered. Mm. But the initial vague concept of the amnesia watch was perhaps devised... Firstly, as a way to reuse an existing prop, rather than to uh, provide a credible plot device. Uh, And even the document itself admitted that there was room for flexibility in how it could be used. For instance, it doesn't really explain how the watch would remove the wearer's memory of anything that happened before they put it on. Unlike the amnesia drugs, the amnesia watch seems to have been devised to only remove their memory of the visit to Shadow HQ rather than any encounters with aliens, which was the main purpose of the amnesia <laughs> right, drugs yeah. otherwise. Yes. Uh, this document also mentions that the watch would normally be turned off during any interrogation or interview, and so the visitor would remember everything that happened during that time. In other words, mm. they'd have a clear memory of a total stranger asking them things like, what do you know about the aliens? Oh. And how big was that UFO? Oh. But not where that conversation took place. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I mean, I think we've all had a few nights like that, haven't we? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> I often wake up to those questions. Yes. Uh, so, as outlined in the memo, the Shadow Amnesia Watch seems to be a bit counterproductive for an organisation trying to keep the existence of aliens secret from the public, but still mm. might have made quite a cool toy. Well, exactly. I suspect that's what they were thinking, weren't they? Yeah. So, I mean, Postrons, would you have bought a Shadow Amnesia Watch toy? Well, maybe they did and they've forgotten about it. Perhaps. And if there's one... For nice! But, uh, uh, yes. Gosh, <laughs> yeah. maybe we've all yeah. forgotten about uh, exactly. it. Maybe exactly. Exactly. a terrible thing ha- ha- that happened in the history of British yes. toy production where we all bought these watches and now nobody can remember it. It's like, um, it's like the silence in Doctor Who, isn't it? Oh, yes, that's right. The minute you right. look away from the, t- the toy watch, watch well, it's, it's a gone. bit like this podcast, isn't it? The minute it's over, you've forgotten <laughs> all about it. <laughs> yeah. Thank goodness for small mercies. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, there we go. Uh, mm. So, yes, would you have bought it? Would you like uh, Podstron to actually use a Shadow Amnesia watch for some reason? Perhaps during the listening of this podcast. I don't know. <laughs> 